planted a whole bunch of watermelon and a couple cantaloupe down there. This is my sugar baby watermelon patch. The two in the center over here aren't doing quite as well, but they are still running and starting to take on some size. I thought both of these cantaloupes would die. I really thought they were started way too late um, and that the sun would kill the little babies, but it did not. Not at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's bigger, better cantaloupes out there, but they're, they're doing pretty good. Now I just need to get some bees up in here. Last year, my watermelon patch was humming. So hopefully this year it'll be the same. Um, I'm gonna start putting neem on them once a week though, because last year the aphids got them. This one is just hanging out there. This is a 224 square foot garden plot. The back few feet is uh, cantaloupe. The rest is all sugar baby watermelons. Um, really making me happy. They're kind of pulling the fence down with the weight of the melons. I, I did not anticipate this. I thought they'd kind of just grow like right through the fence and I'd just like cut them off, but I can't bring myself to cut them. And they're just like taking over everything. And I'm letting them. The melons, as you can see, I counted 32 of them. And I wasn't counting anything that looked like smaller than that. I just ignored those. But they're literally everywhere. There's just melons hanging everywhere. Like they're like hiding in the ground. I see two I didn't see from the other side. There's uh, just a whole line of them over here. I had to rescue two from the fence. 
they were growing right into the wires now they have like butt cheeks today I wanted to talk about my watermelon patch and um, go over what I did uh, what to prep this the soil in this bed and um, why I think it's made a difference so uh, when I first started trying to garden here um, root development was a big problem with most of my veggies um, I had a bunch of pepper plants over here that were all extremely shallow rooted and <clears throat> uh, they needed a lot of shade because their roots were on the surface so they needed mulch and they needed shade and in fact there is one left and it still does it is this Serrano right here and it needs shade it's doing really well but it definitely needs shade um, it's the only annuum in my yard that needs shade <laughs> but it is also the only annuum in my yard that has shallow roots. The rest of these guys were planted in a bed with the same amendments as I'm putting as I put in this bed. I think a ladybug just landed on me. Um, some of our ladybugs bite. <laughs> wee, wee, look at this beautiful butterfly. Anyway, um, so I pretty much prepped the beds for the peppers the same as I did for the watermelons, and it went as follows. Um, okay. I amended the soil with a ton of composted cattle manure. I just bought it a pallet from Home Depot in bags. I turned a bunch of cattle manure, composted cattle manure, into this bed. I amended it with some Dr. Earth's Dry Amendment. It was the, I think, just flower and vegetable fertilizer. It's just the plain Jane one uh, with um, Alfalfa pellets, feather, and bone meal, I think, is pretty much all that's in it. Maybe there was some potash or something, but there's not much in that product. Um, so I turned a bunch of that in, and I incorporated a bunch of um, gypsum. Uh, when I first started, and I was having problems with root developments and this and that, and I started uh, looking at, I was looking up how to fix clay soil, and um, after relentless searching and... <laughs> reading articles on the internet and everything, I realized I needed something that would condition our soil and change the composition of the clay, and that led me to gypsum. Um, I think the first video that I came across per, uh, on, this, on that topic was uh, made by a YouTube content creator whose channel I think is called Global Agronomy. I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. Um, but he's a soil scientist, so I felt like that was a pretty good source of information and I started using gypsum and the results were immediate and really impressive. Um, supposedly it frees up the calcium too for the plants to uptake it, that there's lots of it in our clay soil maybe, but I, I don't know this for fact. I'm, I'm, this is, I'm just um, regurgitating information I read or heard somewhere else. Um, but supposedly it frees up that calcium. From what I understand, that gypsum product should act as a soil conditioner for about the next three years, and hopefully by then I have built enough uh, good black non-clay soil on top and can continue to work gypsum into that, that it continues to like come down through the soil layers. Wait. Um, as soon as I amended the soil, like the same day, um, once I had everything set, I went ahead and covered the um, entire bed with a thick layer of mulch and then I fenced it, one to keep Jasmine out because she really likes the smell of the Dr. Earth's fertilizers and I didn't want her rolling in cow poopy dirt. Um, and then also because even though I sprayed down the straw once I applied it, um, it had a ten it, it'll have a tendency to want to come out. I actually built up the pathway with wood chips and that stopped my straw from leaking out of the fence line there but I used uh, an, I think an entire bale of straw over here um, I did let the soil rest for about two months maybe a month and a half two months after I covered it with the straw and then once I was ready to plant <coughs> my vines which I started uh, as um, I I seeded them in um, soil cups, just little, uh, I don't know if they were styrofoam or red party cups, but that's what I, I used. 
and um, as soon as they were having a few sets of leaves and starting to look like they were getting ready to um, you know be able to tough it out in a harsh environment I didn't even try to acclimate them to this area. I just figured some would die anyway. So I planted them several feet apart down the length of this. And then I did plant um, two cantaloupe pretty darn close together. They're only about 12 inches apart down there, the, uh, maybe 18. But I did that because I really didn't think the cantaloupe would survive. The vines looked pretty weak. They struggled in the sun, um, even though that a shrub right there casts a lot of shade over just that end right there over that moringa tree and that end right there and um, then uh, before I planted or as soon as I planted I should say I moved the straw to the side and then I laid a soaker hose down and I made sure the soaker hose was completely covered in a thick bed of mulch and that it was um, about mm, that far so I don't know a couple inches away from the main roots and that was just to give it some room to grow um, as soon as they started uh, growing like running and I could tell they weren't gonna die I started using um, Neptune's harvest fish emulsion with kelp and just kind of pouring buckets of it um, not not a ton I would like use a, a gallon bucket and kind of guesstimate where the vines were and just pour it along that line and then I spritzed off the leaves and you don't have to probably spritz off the leaves with water but I did because I was afraid of attracting skunks or raccoons or cats or anything else that may think there's a free meal in there and um, want to scratch around in that bit so I did try to water it in pretty good and I used a I think uh, two tablespoons per gallon ratio um, and that's really, really been pretty much all I've done here. There is one more melon that I do need to point out. And this is a volunteer. I think it's based on last year's, I think they're Charleston Grays. I can't really remember. I didn't write it down, but I'm... This is a volunteer watermelon. It's growing out of the, I guess the seed fell out of the compost. It must have been from last year's harvest. I mean, we had a ton of watermelon seeds. And then there's the second one that's growing directly out of the compost bin itself. I don't know if it'll survive in there, but I'm not watering them and I'm not caring for them. Um, but this is a food forest back here or the beginnings of one, so I'm gonna let them go. They can do whatever they want back here. Um, hopefully they make it, but again, I'm not gonna water them and find out. So, um, that's pretty much it on these melons. Um, I'll do an update when we finally harvest them. The first by the patch today, this is just a quick update to my uh, watermelon video. I'm going to add it to the end. Um, I heard a thump and found this poor thing sitting on the ground. And it looks like there's a little bit of stem damage. I don't know if it's insect or if it was from, you know, swinging on the fence. I don't, I don't really know. The wind's been pretty rough out there during storms. <clears throat> anyway, it weighs almost six pounds, and we're going to open it later and see if it tastes good.